From your favorite dietitian, everything you need to digest in your mind. Tips, tips, tips with Tony. Tips, tips, tips with Tony. Making you healthier one bite at a time. Tip with Tony. Tip with Tony. Tip with Tony. Hello, and welcome to the Tips with Tony podcast. I'm Tony Marinucci, your registered dietitian helping you get healthy one bite at a time. So the past couple of weeks, you have heard about all of the mistakes that people make when first starting out towards committing to that healthy lifestyle. Today, you're going to get five more, and it's the last five of this series, but I have a feeling I'll be back in the future to talk about more mistakes that people make because, unfortunately, it is more common than not. So the goal for me, for you, is after listening to these mistakes that people make is that you now learn from it, grow from it, and try your absolute hardest to not make these mistakes. Now, I will say that it's kind of normal to make mistakes, and trust me, when I first started out towards trying to, you know, be healthier, and before I went to school to become a dietitian, and I kind of was doing it on my own, I made plenty of mistakes, and sometimes you have to make the mistakes because they make you grow, and they make you learn, and they make you realize, I don't want to go back to that. Did Been there, done that. I don't want to do it. So this is not to make you, it's not to be like your mom and try to prevent you from making mistakes and trying to keep you safe or nothing like that. But it is there to, you know, advise you, keep you knowledgeable. And just so you know, you will save a lot of time and you will get to that commitment of healthy living a lot faster if you do take some of this advice that I'm throwing at you. So that's my little uh, spiel (laughs) before we get into the last five things that you can do to, or the last five things you don't want to do, the last five mistakes that you don't want to make when going and trying to commit to that healthy lifestyle. So previous episodes, there was 15 things, so we're starting at number 16 today. So number 16 is a lot of people don't plan ahead and they just expect to wing it. And that never works. Never, never, never works. We have to plan. We should be planning what days of the week are we going to do our workouts? When are we going to prepare our healthy food? When are we going to go grocery shopping? When are we going to go to sleep at night? When are we going to wake up in the morning? And I know it sounds overwhelming, but honestly, the more you plan ahead, the more likely you are to actually stick to the things that you say that you're going to do. So planning ahead is so, so important. If you expect to just wing it, unfortunately, you're a lot less likely to actually do what you said that you wanted to do. All right. Number 17 is this is very common. I hear people make mistakes by the fact that they make excuse for every single event or party. And right now I'm recording this, it is summer. And in summer, there are tons of barbecues and vacations and birthday parties and graduations and weddings. And listen, there will always be events. There will always be parties. If you make an excuse for every single time that there's an event and a party and that's your excuse for, you know, maybe drinking too much alcohol or eating too many sweets or having more fried foods than you normally would have or not eating any vegetables or not doing your workout because you figure out what doesn't even matter, you know, these are all things that we need to change the way that we think about um, are these events or these parties. Parties and events, yes, food is a big part of that, but really the idea of having a party or a celebration is to celebrate whatever it is. It's to congratulate the person for completing their master's degree. It's for getting together with your family that you haven't seen in forever. If you're going on vacation, yes, you want to enjoy different, unique, maybe cuisines or foods that you normally wouldn't have on a regular basis, but the idea is to take a break from, you know, maybe your daily responsibilities. We can't always have it be about the food because if it's about the food, then there's always going to be a reason why we can't actually be healthier. Similar to that is 
when people blame others for the reason why they're not reaching their goals. So an excuse for a party or an event is really just not taking responsibility. And the same thing can be, well, you know, my spouse doesn't support me in my healthy eating or my friends don't understand or, oh, they made me drink extra or they made me um, eat this dessert that I didn't want to have. You know, at the end of the day, we can't be consistently blaming other people for our health and happiness. The second that you take ownership of your food choices, then that's when you're actually going to see the results of healthy eating uh, consistently. I think another thing that comes to mind is I I deal with my clients that I work with, um, a few of them struggle with emotional eating and having an attachment to food and their association of feeling angry or sad or mad or stressed out about whatever situation. It's associated directly to let me turn to food. And that association is something that we work on breaking together. But blaming the feeling as the reason why you're choosing to eat is an excuse And it is something that until you can finally take responsibility of, although I'm feeling this way, that doesn't mean that I have to turn to food. Then once you do that, you'll start to reap the benefits of finding other outlets to deal with your stress and all that stuff. But blaming others for making you feel a certain way and then turning to food, nobody forced you to do that. And that's where the, I'm usually not so like tough love. I feel like it's coming out that way because I'm a lot more understanding with my clients one-on-one. But ultimately, that's what we end up discussing is who's really making you eat. You know, is it the person who's stressing you out or is it your reaction to the person who's stressing you out? All right. So number 19 of mistakes that people make when first starting out towards healthy, uh, towards committing to a healthy lifestyle is they do whatever their friend or family member is doing. They just follow the diet that they read on the internet or they follow what their friend's doing or, you know, what their aunt said is the best way to weight loss. And they don't do enough research. They don't think about, is this actually for me? Is this sustainable? Um, And they forget to realize that they are not the same person as their aunts. They have a different job. They have a different schedule. They have different likes, dislikes, food allergies, intolerances, medical conditions. There are so many factors that go into play when creating a nutrition plan that's sustainable that if we just copy what everybody else is doing, we're never actually going to find the solution for ourselves because you are an individual. So as an individual, you need to have a nutrition plan that's specific for you and only you. By copying somebody else, you're not going to be successful. And that definitely leads me to my last point of mistakes that people make when going towards healthy eating and exercising or competing to that healthy lifestyle is they are not getting help from a professional. If you're looking on improving your diet, meet with a registered dietitian so that they, they can go over what your goals are, go over what you're currently eating on a regular basis, and make modifications to that to develop a plan that's sustainable for you and specific to you and only to you. You might be able to do it on your own, but you're going to waste a lot of time trying to figure it out and sift through all the information out there. You will save so much time if you invest in that nutrition professional to help guide you. And the same thing goes with fitness and exercise. If you don't really know how to exercise, you're not feeling comfortable in the gym, you know, schedule an appointment with a trainer. Have them show you some things. Give them give yourself a chance and say you'll save a ton of time by speaking with people who know better. And it doesn't always even have to be that you have to spend money. It's just meaning that you want to get the advice from the a credible resource. 
Okay, so I hope that this was helpful. I gave you 20 mistakes not to make <laughs> when trying to develop and go towards that healthier lifestyle. If you are interested in working with me one-on-one, -on -one, I do offer online nutrition counseling. So what you would need to do if you're interested in that is fill out the application to work with me. You would go to www.tipswithtony.com and there's a work with me tab and there's an application that should take you less than four minutes to complete and it gives me an idea of what you're looking for and then I can assess if you'd actually be a good fit for my program and how I work with my clients on an individual basis. So I hope this was helpful. I'm really, really excited to continue to educate you with future episodes. If you have any comments or questions, or suggestions for future episodes, send me an email to tipswithtony at gmail.com. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube, and I'll talk to you soon. Have a healthy day.